Welcome back. What's the difference between uh, these aircraft and this one? Or these aircraft and these ones? I really didn't know. They all appear similar commercial type passenger carrying aircraft. But no, there is a fundamental difference between most commercial aircraft and the Boeing 737 fleet, not just the MAX series. In a brilliantly written piece by one of my viewers, Ken Whitfield, an aircraft engineer now living in Hawaii, he sums up the fundamental problem with the 737 fleet. What Ken wrote is so insightful, I'm just going to read verbatim his letter to me. Ken Whitfield. The 737 was developed during the era when dual redundancy was the standard practice in jet aviation. It was also designed before the widespread application of computers and software design solutions. For 60 years, the 737 has been updated numerous times, but this latest update, that is mainly about installing larger, more powerful, more fuel-efficient engines, turned out to be a far greater engineering challenge than anticipated. The physical and economic constraints of this early 1960s airplane design made the task of integrating the new engines near impossible, in my opinion. Airbus has successfully lobbied that their triple redundant design should apply to all large jet transport airplanes. In fact, the 737 is the only aircraft in this market segment manufactured today that doesn't have triple redundancy in all its safety critical systems. Continuing to grandfather the 737 into a market with greater inherent safety, in my opinion, was not a good decision. Sooner or later, the 737 simply could not continue as a competitive aircraft. Again, in my opinion, Boeing should have continued the design studies for a more modern, clean sheet of paper design in the late 1980s while it was creating the 737NG derivative. In fact, many design studies were conducted, including a shorter fuselage version of the 757-200 as a 737 replacement. When the 787 came along, semi-serious consideration was given to a shortened 7873 version, but each of these efforts failed, in part because they would produce an aircraft that would be much heavier and more expensive to build and purchase than the tried and true 737. Airlines such as Southwest, even Continental United and KLM insisted on a new airplane that was more similar to the older versions of the 737 so they wouldn't need to train a new, different pilot and maintenance workforce. With the 737 MAX, Boeing once again had the opportunity to choose an all-new design, or upgrade the ancient 737. They again made the economically expedient and cheaper decision, rather than the best long-term market-responsive choice. In order to make the MAX more viable and competitive with the Airbus A320, however, they needed to minimize the crew training impact to a short and simple computer-based lesson on airplane differences and avoid the need for additional simulated training compared to the previous 737 Next Generation version. This goal could be achieved by reducing the training time required and cost incurred to prepare previously trained 737 pilots to fly this latest version. Boeing got in trouble with the regulatory agencies around the world by hiding the fact that MCAS, or Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, was even installed in the airplane. Not telling the regulators 
the pilots or the airplane bias about this key design change to the airplane was not only a very fateful decision, but it also sullied the reputation of Boeing and also the FAA. Which is why the 737 MAX is where it is today, in very serious risk of continued program financial viability and possible termination. The ultimate fate of the MAX is not necessarily the ultimate consequence for previous 737 versions, which do not possess the MCAS system. However, this is not a good time for the future prospects of any 737, because ESA has now fully revealed and called into question the safety of all airplanes that do not have at least a triple redundancy design in safety critical systems such as flight controls. Wasn't that interesting? Can you imagine the 737 MAX series ever flying in the EU? Probably not. And it might just be possible that the legacy 737 fleet, including all of the current Ryanair aircraft, might also have to be grounded under this triple redundancy rule. Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Ken. And it just goes to say, the truth is out there. Mm -hmm.